Good afternoon. My name is Brian and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the celebration of Mass today. We extend a warm welcome to anyone who might be visiting with us or to those who are new to our parish. In the spirit of Christian fellowship, please turn to those near you, maybe someone you do not know yet, or someone alone and extend a warm welcome. We also welcome those joining us at home or virtually. You are part of our parish family. We pray that soon you will be able to join us in person. Until such time, we pray you continue to be healthy and safe. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent and we light the fourth candle on our Advent wreath, the light of hope. As we move closer to Christmas, we pray during this liturgy that each of us embraces the gift of faith, the comfort of peace, the gentle touch of love, and the blessing of hope. Never let these candles go out in the manger of your hearts. The celebrant for this liturgy is Father Valentine. The Mass is being offered for Teresa Aiello, Eric Wildman, Bill Dunn, Kowalski, Harry Hansen, the DiCarlo family living. Can we rise, please? May glory be given to Jesus Christ forever and ever. May the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. With the lighting of this fourth candle, let us pray for perseverance, for the grace to be faithful in good times and in bad, in season and out of season, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we light this candle, the fourth candle of Adam read. Let's pray for so many families in our parish family having a rough time. Linda just lost, uh, buried her nephew. Anna Carpia just buried her niece. We have one of our co-worker, Eric Hansen, who was buried today. We have two funerals on this coming Monday, uh, remembering uh, Audrey Moore and George Laurel. So it's a difficult time, tough time, a lot of families are having. So it's like that. We also pray for them. In the dark of night, Lord, give us perseverance. In the dead of winter, Lord, give us perseverance. In the heat of a day, Lord, give us a perseverance. On the uphill side, Lord, give us perseverance. When the odds are against us, Lord, give us perseverance. When others have abandoned us, give us perseverance. When we don't know the way, Lord, give us perseverance. When we cannot find your face, Lord, give us perseverance. We cannot find your face, O oh Lord, give us a perseverance. When our burden seems too great, Lord, give us perseverance. When we suffer for your name, Lord, give us perseverance. When we hunger for your word, O Lord, give us perseverance. When we thirst for your joy, Lord, give us perseverance. When our best effort seems to be too little, give us perseverance. When those around us have given up, give us perseverance. When trust and hope unravel, un Lord, give us perseverance. 
When our faith wears thin, Lord, give us perseverance. When we are confused and conflicted, give us perseverance. When one more step seems just too, too much, Lord, give us perseverance. In whatever our greatest difficulties might be, Lord, give us perseverance. Lord, send your spirit, Lord, to stand in our hearts, to give us new purpose, to stir up our faith, to light our path, to show us the way, and to give us perseverance, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. As we are celebrating this Eucharist, let us also call to mind our own sins. What is Christmas without a spiritual preparation? Today I was uh, here for the confession. Just one person come. People are afraid to go for confession, sit in a country box. Maybe this time we can use it to have a little general absolution. Maybe remember your sins of the past and present. Talk to God and say, God, this is the area I want to ask your pardon. This is the area I want to change my life. And your penance will be, as God is good to you, God is kind to you, God is forgiving to you, forgive one another. Maybe remember all those people have hurt you in all your entire life. Today, forgive them. Today, forgive them. So we seek God's forgiveness. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Are we sorry for all your sins? Only a few people say, everybody? Yes. Okay, I give the absolution. God the Father of our mercies, to the death and resurrection of His Son, reconcile the world to Himself, send the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. And through the ministry of the Church, may God grant you pardon and peace. And absolutely from all your sins of the past and present. Since you are confessed, since you are forgotten, in the name of Jesus, mighty name, holy name, precious name, I absolve you all, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And you have been forgiven for your penance, Tomorrow, get me a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Let us pray. Poor folk, we ask you, Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your beloved Son, who made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's hear the word of God. You'll find the readings in your bulletin. The readings are on pages 5 and 6. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go. Do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. 
the Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth. To a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said. And wondered what sort of meaning this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your home and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But when he said to the angel, how can this be? Since I have no relations with a man. And the angel said to reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in our old age. And this is the sixth month for her, was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. But he said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. My family, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What of our desire in life, besides wanting to be happy, is that everything will be peaceful and smooth sailing. We don't like it when life becomes bumpy and rocky and stony. In other words, we don't like to be disturbed in life, whether by situation or by people. When we get disturbed, we will get irritated and frustrated and we grumble and complain. What we have undergone and are still undergoing is great, great disturbance. We can call it the disturbance of our generation. The only consolation is that everyone, in fact the whole world, is affected by it. We have not heard anyone say, I love this pandemic, or that I was looking forward to this. Is anybody? You are smart. For anyone to say that, they must be crazy. Oh yes, this time has been time for great disturbance. But when we think about it, since when life is without disturbance, from the moment we came into this world, it is one disturbance after another. Life is like a series of disturbances. Today's gospel passage is commonly known as the Annunciation. It is a message of the good news of salvation. But when we read it again, we will notice that when the angel Gabriel greeted Mary, she was disturbed and deeply disturbed. And maybe even before that, if we do not do some imagining, we may picture the angel Gabriel being rather disturbed when God told him to go and announce that message to Mary. We can imagine that as Gabriel came to Nazareth, he was a bit anxious and a bit nervous. Would Mary accept what he was going to tell her? It sounded so out of this world, so impossible. And to the end, Mary was disturbed deeply disturbed and Gabriel had a lot of explaining to do but, at the, but in the end Mary accepted but that doesn't mean that the disturbance has ended in fact 
more was to come. As you hear this passage on his last Sunday at Advent, we will not think of it as a disturbing passage. After all, Christmas is just a few days away. And we want to be happy and forget about the disturbances of life. But actually disturbances are source of growth. We can draw strength and experience from it. We see nature, when the winds blow, the trees are disturbed. But they grow stronger from it and they hold on firmer to the ground. This type of great disturbance has affected all of us, especially the seniors. Families with a lot, has a lot of issues of the health, finances, sicknesses, family dynamics, and the loss of a loved one to the century. Yes, Mary, our mother, and the beloved husband Joseph, have shown us what perseverance and resilience is about when we say yes to the Lord. So like Mary, our mother, and also like St. Joseph, let us also say yes to the Lord. We will face challenges and disturbances, but we will overcome and we will grow stronger and be happy in life. Amen? Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My dear parish family, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, the church reflects on Mary as she waits to give birth to her son Jesus. At the same time, we mark the beginning of this year of St. Joseph, proclaimed by Pope Francis. And our response is God of Advent, hear our prayer. May the tender devotion which Pope Francis has for Mary help us to love her, the mother of Jesus, spouse of Joseph, with greater affection and seek her prayers in the face of this coronavirus pandemic. We pray to the Lord. God of Advent, hear our prayer. May this year of St. Joseph help the church, of which he is a patron, to find in him the example to care for our families to be just in all we do, and to trust in God's will, we pray to the Lord. God, I invite you in our prayer. May mothers carry the child in their womb with love, as did Mary, and fathers be protective and caring of their families, as did Joseph, we pray to the Lord. God, I invite you in our prayer. We pray for the poor, the homeless, and the lonely, for whom this time of year brings anxiety, rather than happiness, that they may benefit from the kindness and generosity of others, and that the peace of Christ may be theirs and their families. We pray to the Lord. God, I pray our prayer. As the world continues to suffer from this horrific pandemic, we pray for a peaceful and safe Christmas, and that there is a sharing of the great love which the Father showed for all peoples with the birth of his Son, Jesus, Made man, and we remember Martha, Geraldine, Alan Rodriguez, Anne and George Bandion, Connie Tester, Joseph Smithell, Michael DeBreeze, Sal and Fran Manziello, Ed Cohn, Betty Pretic, Patrick, Marianne O'Connell, Mary Ellen Fagan, Ben Shifo, Phil Sagrabane, Philip Carter, we pray to the Lord. As we look forward to the joys of Christmas, our hearts are with all families who have recently lost loved ones, especially 
Audrey Moon, Jordan Caffarella, Luigi Pacci, Anna Kuma, George Laura, Michael Gerace, Eric Hansen, Helen Bach, William Bruning, Roland Walsh, Dennis Green. We pray that Christ's promise that they are in the loving care of the Father who created them in a consolation to them at this time. We pray to the Lord. God, God pray with you in our prayer. prayer. For our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers and this Mass being offered for Teresa Ayala, Bill Dankowski, Eric Hansen, Eric Wildman, 12-year-old Anne, the Carlo family living. This we pray to the Lord. Lord, God of heaven. Father, we charm the confidence that you will hear our prayers and bring us the peace which all mankind desires at this most holy time of year. We make this prayer to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And pray to St. Joseph in this holy year, the Holy Father has given us. Hail, Guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you, God, entrusted His only Son, in you, Mary, placed her trust, with you, Christ became man. Blessed St. Joseph, to us to show yourself a Father and guide us in the path of life, obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. We ask, Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the announcement, blessed the fruit of thy own Jesus. Holy Mary, the mother of God, pray for our sinners in the name of God.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation, and giving thanks that you have this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the body king of the body and bread of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring out to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our beloved Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And this act of remembering, please, I am, Bill, Ted Koski, Eric Hansen, Eric Wilderman, on 12th their anniversary, and also remembering George Alor, Audrey Paul, Michael Jules, Helen Clark, Roland Walsh, Dennis Green, Anna Kumo, John, bring them home to you to be with you forever. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, including Saint Pius of Genoa, Patron Saint, Saint Agnes, Father Pio, Saint Teresa of Canada, Saint Francis, Saint Pellegrini, and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, may merit to be coherent in eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <coughs> Patiently awaiting the Lord whose coming is near, let us rejoice as we lift up our hands and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always free from sin and save from all distress, as I with the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, Lord Jesus Christ, the city apostle, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, will you reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear friend, peace of loving and compassion, Jesus, be with us all. Amen. 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 My dear family, behold, this is Jesus, the Son of God and Son of Mary, our Emmanuel, died with us. And blessed are we who are invited to this table of love, and prayerfully we all can say together, Lord, I am not worthy, just a matter of what is this word, I shall say. Prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself only to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
direction this weekend is for the support of the Mississippi Falls Society. Thank you for your support and generosity. Many thanks to all the donated gift cards and donations for the St. Father Ten Angel Cat Ministry. We were overwhelmed with their generosity and are grateful to Steve Carr, coordinator of the Angel Tech Ministry. Gifts were delivered to the organization this past week in time for the sea, to receive for Christmas. I pledge you all for the sacrament of reconciliation. That is tomorrow, December 21st, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. or by appointment. These are the for Christmas Mass. The schedule of Mass for Christmas can be found in the bulletin as well as the parish website. Please plan ahead. Visit the parish website to reserve your seat for the mass you will attain or call the parish office. Reservations are on a first come, first serve basis. The 2 p.m., 3.30 p.m., and 5 p.m. masses in the church are full. If somebody wants, at least they give you $5,000 and give them two seats. <laughs> and they get park and my garage and car. <laughs> Tickets are not required. However, others, uh, ushers will have master list to check each person. The youth group intends to offer a monthly rosary prayer served on Monday evening. The January service is tentatively scheduled for January 11. All are welcome. Santa has informed me that he will be visiting our parish tomorrow, uh, December 20th. He will be available for pictures following the 10.30 a.m. and 12 p.m. masses. Uh, at the school building, uh, we supposed to have near the ground because of the weather, so we will have the entrance of the gym, mass required. The parish office will be closed for December 24th, 25th, and 26th for the Christmas holiday, and I need a lot of rice. I'm so tired. <laughs> uh, so please try to cooperate, be just nice and good. If I reserve, please come to the reserve, what reserve mass, but just don't show up. We don't want to conflict. Uh, we have plenty of space in the gym for the, all the masses. We can have 150 people. We come to give the space. So I know everybody wants to come to church because it's so beautiful. And most of the masses I'm going to celebrate, just kidding. All right. But uh, try to go to the, uh, to the gym if I don't reserve. So that's a nice place to worship too. This time for a concluding prayer. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws near, ever nearer, we may praise forward all the more eagerly. To be worthy celebration of the mystery of your son's nativity, who is reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of good God be upon us and our parish, and all our families, especially our difficult world. The world needs healing, and also for our own church. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now go in peace to love God, love others, be disciples, and restore all things in Christ. Thanks be to God. If I don't see you on the of the charts, you can join our pastoral associate and pastoral staff. I want to wish you all a merry, happy, and safe Christmas. Thank you. Thank you.